Welcome everyone to Pivotal Stories. I'm Jeff Kelly. We're here at Spring One Platform 2018. And my guests are Sue Chu, Head of Consumer Banking Technology at DBS, and Sabu Patia, Chief Architect at DBS, which is based in Singapore. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, Sue, why don't we start with you? Tell us a little bit about DBS, the business you're in, uh, and perhaps you could talk about the way technology is changing consumer expectations in your industry. So DBS is the uh, largest uh, Southeast Asia Bank. Uh, we are 50 years old this year. We actually have uh, been recognized as the best di digital bank in the world by Euro Money uh, this year, second time in uh, three years. For us, actually, we believe that uh, the, the consumer behavior is uh, changing rapidly to, to be uh, moving into the digital world. And uh, we believe that uh, to be relevant, we need to continue to reimagine banking. And how did you go about doing that? You're working with Pivotal, I understand, uh, with Pivotal Labs. And so there's obviously a, there's a cultural process component, software development component, and there's also a platform and technology component. Maybe you could touch on the software development component and some of the things you're doing there to modernize. Yep. so uh, you know, to transform ourselves to become a software company is uh, one of the key imperative. We believe that uh, the bank is uh, becoming uh, more and more digital and we want to deliver all our services and products digitally. Working with Pivotal to, to transform how we build software has been one of the key things that we have started a few years ago. Um, we engage Pivotal Labs um, to pair with our people to, to look at how we can uh, uh, incorporate aspects of pair programming, TDD, into how we build our software. We also adopt uh, Pivotal Cloud Foundry in terms of uh, the platform as a service to help us to, to deliver uh, the various uh, capabilities that uh, we would prefer to, uh, to have the platform handle rather than uh, our developers spend time on them, uh, such as uh, you know, dealing with the infrastructure and uh, all the various uh, non-functionalities such as uh, you know, auto-scaling, self-healing and, and so on. So that has been uh, you know, one of the key objectives for, for us. Sabu, can you talk a little bit about the platform Pivotal Cloud Foundry and how that is really an enabler for your developers and helping them uh, get faster at delivering software, responding to their customers faster? How does PCF, or what role does PCF play in that? PCF is the core platform. So I guess when we kind of got into PCF, we wanted to like, write our software in a cloud-native way. And that's just not a terminology. Fundamentally, our business is shifting. So we need to be able to write software that we can roll out quite rapidly and it can be customized by customer segment or country and so forth. So in order to write the software at scale, like we needed a platform that does all like the heavy lifting for us. So we don't want to be like just involved in a long cycle of testing and UAT and so forth and everything is manual. So we wanted a platform that fundamentally offers us like the end-to-end -end visibility and the ability to uh, like roll out of software. But more importantly, given this was a new direction for us, we wanted to try something that does have an opinion. And as you know, Cloud Foundry is a very uh, like opinionated platform in terms of how we do things. So it actually creates a certain level of discipline, and it also gives us the ability to write our software in an open source standard that a lot of the newer people like we're hiring are quite used to. So it's actually used both as a platform to deliver our software to our customers, but the same token is also used as a platform to attract talent. Mm -hmm. People now don't want to work on those large scale Java based like monoliths that are like a three tiered application that has a large web server and then has like a middle tier and a big database. They do want to work on something that is highly scalable and like highly available and has an impact that grows beyond a few hundred people. So I think it's also been a good platform for us to be able to attract talent. Mm -hmm. and, and talk about the transition from the way the operations and IT team traditionally supported developers and, and how, they've had, how they've learned some of the new techniques and the new approaches that come with working with a platform like PCF in terms of taking advantage of all the automation, yeah. focusing on services rather than managing servers, those kinds of things. How did you manage that transition and help essentially teach some of your uh, platform folks how to do this? I think the, that, like the notion of having a, a CI server was kind of known to the bank and we've been kind of having a CI sort of a pipeline there. Like we're in, like we build stuff, it goes to a CI uh, sort of a server and stuff happens, some test runs and we get some metrics and so forth. And kind of that was like the extent of stuff we were doing. But once you start dealing with a platform like Cloud Foundry, wherein you have a very well-defined structure of dev, UAT, prod, and the migrations from like each of the platform, you've got to go beyond CI. So it's not about just putting Cloud Foundry and saying, I'm done. Right. Because when you start to write software, you need to think about your life cycle. 
and you want to kind of automate that life cycle as much as possible. So in parallel to building Cloud Foundry and training our team, it was also building our pipeline for CI, CD, and like release management. And building that capability in parallel was a key thing. But we still are a bank. There are lots of compliance rules that we need to follow. So tr traditionally, we were following a lot of the rules and doing a lot of stuff manually. There was a marginal stuff in CI that was kind of automated. So we really had a look at what we really need to do from a compliance perspective. And as it boils down, a lot of stuff that we were doing can be automated. So when we built our CI, CD pipelines and our release pipeline along with Cloud Foundry, the idea was not to do everything manually, but to identify the steps clearly and to start to save where the value is and really look for ways to automate it. Even those steps that can't be automated are still a part of the pipeline, but it helps us to then reason about where our time is going. Now this, there are some good reasons for which we may have to do something manually. That's fine, as long as we know about it and we can quantify it. So I think a part of this transition was not just putting in Cloud Foundry and getting like a Spring Framework or Spring Cloud or Spring Boot. It was more about how do we work. So we had to fundamentally teach our software engineers like how to do uh, software engineering and how to do test-driven development and, and, and how to really fundamentally think about the problem. And I think the transition was not just for the engineers, it was the bank as a whole. Because you can't just build a new platform like this and say, I'm going to get like a 400 page document and I'm going to write software. Our teams in the bank had to change. So we had to go from specifying a three year project to really understanding what the MVPs are and then planning out each story and each stage and building them quite incrementally. So the journey was not just an engineering effort. It was more of a, a business led agile. Sue, so in terms of the relationship between developers and the operations team, how has that changed? working with a platform like PCF, adopting some of these modern development methods. Uh, we hear from a lot of customers it's a much more collaborative uh, relationship, uh, much more of a uh, working relationship versus kind of just, hey, there's the, there's the IT team, they support us, but we don't interact with them much. How has that changed the relationship? So I think uh, with the PCF, the whole relationship tran transforms us a lot. I think the platform empowers the developer. Um, the silo between the ops and, and the dev actually has been totally removed. Uh, because of the capability of PCF, the, the, the developers are able to uh, use a lot of the self-service capabilities and you know, uh, do a lot of the stuff related to infrastructure and the platform on their own rather than um, you know, filling out a form or, or something like that. So you know, the, the whole uh, working model actually has been uh, totally transformed and uh, you know, I think in terms of the developer satisfaction, uh, it was very high. And the, the friction between uh, ops and dev actually ha has been totally removed. We don't identify um, the, the people uh, by those two uh, labels anymore with the platform. Of course, ultimately, you're trying to serve your customers uh, and provide value to them. So let's take it one step further. Uh, while the platform enables the developers, the developers are trying to serve customers. Could you share any successes you've had in terms of maybe new applications you built or, or services that have been delivered to customers? How is it translating the value to your customers? So one of the key things that we have built on top of the Cloud Foundry platform has been the, one of the API portal that we launched last year. Uh, it was actually voted as the world's biggest uh, banking API portal. We exposed about 200 plus API on that platform. Um, that, that enables our partners uh, to use the, the API from the bank to experiment new, new use cases that will uh, help to service our customers. Uh, they actually uh, reimagine how we could have used uh, the data in the bank uh, to help our customers. So that has been one of the key examples uh, how we have used uh, PCF uh, to enable uh, the software development within the bank. And as we wrap up, Sabu, what, what has been, I guess, the biggest, uh, maybe the best, biggest surprise or lesson learned for you in, during this experience? And, and looking forward, you know, what's on your roadmap for the next six to 12 months? I guess, I mean, like the biggest surprise for me, when we started off the kind of the cloud foundry path, like, you know, we had read a lot of journals, we'd gone to a lot of meetings, we'd talked to a lot of people, and a lot of people already talked about zero downtime, especially on the platform side. And yeah, it kind of made sense theoretically, but I hadn't ever in my career seen it. Now, we've been running Cloud Foundry in production for about two years, and in this last year, we've done 23 major upgrades of the platform itself, uh, and we've had zero downtime. We've gone from a minor version to a major version, but we went to PCF 2.0. There was a zero downtime. When I said zero downtime, this was in production. And seeing it really happen in production, you know, going from dev, then to UAT, then to prod, and seeing how we manage our concourse pipelines, which is quite similar to how our Jenkins pipelines are managed for all the software we write, and seeing it in action has been 
kind of a surprise. Like it actually works well, <laughs> right? You know, we always talk about automation. We always talk about zero downtime, but to see it for ourselves at scale and running live production apps and for it to happen has been a surprise. It's just been a pleasant surprise. It's been a lot of effort, a lot of hard work, but, but in the end, lot like the results really speak for themselves. Same question to you as we wrap up. What has been maybe the big, biggest surprise or lesson learned for you and, and what's on your agenda the next six, 12 months? I think, uh, you know, in terms of the platform's capability to empower our developer to provide us with all the, the you know, auto-healing, uh, auto-scaling and so on, that has been a great enabler. And, and for us, for the next, uh, next six to nine months, we want to continue to transform our digital bank uh, using this platform uh, and, and start to expose, uh, you know, the rest of our capabilities using this platform. Fantastic. Sabu, Sue, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, and good luck in the future. Great. Thank you. Thank you.